Hello, Assalamu alaikum from Lahore. And very good morning. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Koko, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology, as we are discussing law. And this is the third lecture on this topic. And in this lecture, I'll be discussing the legal procedures. So the contents of my talk in this lecture will be that we'll be discussing what are legal procedures which are adopted in the law courts, what is meant by summons, what are warrants of arrest, and what is proclamation and what is onus of proof and laws of evidence, evidence act, what is an evidence? Then what are types of evidence? That means it can be oral or written or the types of evidence can be direct evidence or indirect or circumstantial evidence and hearsay evidence. Then the evidence a type of witness that can be common witness or expert witness. And the doctor acts as both the common witness when he presents the facts of the case and when he draws conclusion, then he acts as expert witness. And what is testimony and what is deposition in the law courts. The admissibility of evidence, which is the uh, requirement of the court, that is the best evidence, which is admissible, that is the direct evidence who has actually witnessed the fact and opinion of the expert is also admissible. And the indirect evidence, which is presented by the expert as a form of book or as form of conclusion that is also admissible. Now the legal procedures. What are summons? Summon is basically call for a witness to appear before the court. And that is through a written order called as summon. So summon is a written signed document issued by the court to call for any person to appear before the court for the evidence. And this document contains the seal of the court affixed on the face name of the person, that is the witness, accused or the juror, then the call for the date and time of appearance is noted down on that summon. And in case of doctor, it also contains the medical legal report number, MLC number, or postmortem report number, or PMR number, which is the reference of the case, so the doctor can bring the original record to the court. Now, arrest of warrants, when the summon is refused or it, it remains ineffective, then the warrants of arrest of the witness and produced him in the court, they are issued. And it is the direction to the area police to arrest that person and present him in the court. And this situation is quite serious and can embarrass a doctor. But usually uh, the courts, they are reluctant to issue the uh, arrest of warrants for the doctor, but there are other more aggressive ways to compel the witness to appear before the court. That is proclamation. That is the advertisement is made in the newspaper or in various channels. So written proclamation, execution of bond with or without surety, these are various. Uh, procedures which are adopted by the court. Generally, the courts are reluctant to issue the arrest warrants in the favor of doctor. Now about the legal procedures which are adopted, they are the proceedings in the law courts and they are concerned for the case which is under trial. Both the parties of the case, they bring witnesses, including the medical practitioner to the court to narrate their evidences. And in criminal cases, the onus of proof, that is the responsibility of proof of an allegation rests on the party who makes the allegation and he has to prove it beyond doubt. Whereas in the civil cases, the onus of proof during the proceeding can shift from one party to the other. 
For example, in a case of divorce proceeding, a girl requests dissolution of marriage due to impotence of the husband, and then she has to prove non-consumption of marriage. He should, she should be subjected to medical examination and should be proved non-consumption of marriage. But if during the trial, the husband claims that he is potent and makes an allegation about his wife suffering from some disease like vaginismus, and then the onus of proof then shifts from husband to the girl. Now about the laws of the evidence, the statement of the witness in the court, they are made according to the laws of the evidence. And the attorney, they bring the parties, provide the guidance to the witness in this matter. And the Evidence Act has codified the rules of the English law with such modification as they are necessary in the circumstances of our country. Some cases do present difficulty for which principles of common law are applied. It has been defined to prevent laxity in its admissibility and to introduce a uniform rule. So the evidence can be a physical evidence or any other fact. So the evidence means a fact or any information in an issue in a case which a witness is capable of receiving through his own senses. So evidence is a fact or information received by a person through his own senses. That is through vision, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. And this can be a physical evidence or it can be biological evidence and it has to be testified. Now the testimony will go on. So the testimony effect or information after its presentation in the court of law by a witness is called testimony. And what is deposition? Deposition is the statement of a witness in a court of law taken down in the written in the presence and hearing of the accused and is subsequently read over and signed by the person making it and by the judge of the court. Whereas the witness, there are two types, common witness and the expert witness. The common witness, common witness is and one who only testifies the facts which he has perceived with his own senses. Whereas the expert witness is one who is qualified and trained to draw a conclusion from the facts which are observed by him or which are presented to him. So medical practitioner acts both as a common and as an expert witness. Now, what are various types of evidences? The types of evidences which are accepted in the court, they are the direct evidence, circumstantial evidence, opinion of an expert. The direct evidences means the testimony given by a man who has himself perceived through his own senses. And it is the testimony of the witness to the existence or non-existence of the fact. For example, a road traffic accident seen by a person, a car hitting a man while crossing the road is the direct evidence. Now the circumstantial evidence as opposed to direct evidence, it tends to prove a fact by a process of inference. That means the fact which is another fact is inferenced or derived that from one fact, you drive another fact. For example, a person lying dead on the road, close to him are broken windscreen pieces and tire marks, which are of breaking on the road. So these are the facts which offer a circumstantial evidence of a road traffic accident. 
Now, the opinion of expert, this means the conclusion drawn upon the facts observed by him or facts which are presented to him because he is trained and qualified person in his specialty. So the medical opinion about the weapon of offense, duration of injury when based upon the characteristics of the wound becomes under this category that he draws a conclusion that these injuries are caused by blunt weapon or firearm and this much is the duration. Any printed material or a technical book can be an expert opinion. Regarding the admissibility of evidence in a law court, this means which evidence is admissible. Depending upon the condition that the evidence must be relevant, it should be confined to the matter which is being discussed in the court and it should be the best evidence. And the best evidence is that which is the direct evidence or indirect, which is the opinion of the expert. The opinion of expert become indirect evidence when he has himself not actually witnessed, but he is presented certain facts and he draws conclusion upon those facts, then this is indirect evidence. But as he is an expert, it is acceptable in the court of law. So it may be an oral or a written. So when you depose in front of the court, it becomes deposition. Here say evidence is not admissible. Suni Sunai Baat, you heard from one person and tells that somebody told me this has happened. This here say evidence is not admissible in the court. Here say evidence is basically that evidence of some fact which a witness himself has not witnessed but has heard from somebody else. So it is not admissible in the court of law except dying declaration. Dying declaration is the declaration of a dying person in a medical legal case and his statement is recorded and it is a hearsay evidence, but it is admissible in the court of law. So the contents of today's, the summary of today's talk is that we have talked about the legal procedures, what are summons, what are arrest of warrants, what is proclamation, and what is the onus of proof, what are various laws of evidence, evidence act, and what is evidence. Then the types of evidence, oral or the written, and it can be either the direct evidence or indirect evidence or circumstantial evidence and hearsay evidence. And the type of witness, they are common witness or the expert witness. The doctor X as both common as expert. And there is testimony and the deposition, which are the legal procedure in the law courts. Then the admissibility of the evidence we have discussed that the best evidence which is admissible is the direct evidence which is actually perceived in opinion of expert and indirect evidence is which is admissible is, that is the opinion of, expo, opinion of the expert upon the facts presented to him when he has not himself uh, uh, observed but the facts are presented and inference is drawn then that is indirect but it is admissible as an opinion of the expert thank you very much take care and allah Hafiz. please subscribe to my channel and this is my channel name dr javed